Hello and welcome to the Alliance for Democracies, the Populist Dialogues. Our program promotes progressive populist perspectives on the issues of the day. The Alliance for Democracy is dedicated to establishing true democracy and ending corporate domination. Our guest today is environmental activist Lloyd Marbet. Lloyd Marbet has been an activist since he returned from a tour of duty in Vietnam in 1975, became alarmed at the dangers of nuclear power. Portland General Electric was building Oregon's only commercial nuclear plant called Trojan. Lloyd headed up several initiative campaigns to close it down. He continues to be concerned about the dangers of nuclear energy. So welcome to the show, Lloyd. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, David. It's good to see you again. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since you've been on the on the program. So um, we, we have kind of a new danger uh, on the nuclear front. So we, we have these plants like uh, uh, here in here in the Pacific Northwest. We actually only have one commercial plant, which is Left, Columbia. That's right, uh, the Columbia Generating Station. Right. Yeah. Right. Can, can you say a few words about that? Well, the um, the Columbia Generating Station, uh, ironically, is a, a boiling water reactor um, almost identical in design to the Fukushima reactors that melted down in Japan. Um, they are old reactors. They got a license, a license extension, a 20 year license extension in order to be able to continue to operate the plant. They've got a uh, high level nuclear waste sitting in, in dry casts on a concrete pad next to the plant, next to the Columbia River in Hanford. Oh. Um, and over a fault. And yes, that's right. And there's been recent uh, geologic information that shows that the faults there are much greater than what the plant was originally designed for. So now you have, you know, the matchbox waiting for the match to be struck. And um, there's been a tremendous effort to, to try and do something about this. Chuck Johnson at Physicians for Social Responsibility has taken the lead on this. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is an initiative that's being sponsored in the state of Washington that is very similar to the initiatives that we ran against the Trojan nuclear plant in, in an effort to shut it down. And so I very much encourage people to get a hold of Chuck at uh, Physicians for so Social Responsibility and get involved. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and that's Oregon Physicians for Social Responsibility. Yeah, that's Oregon's. Okay. Also, the Washington. They're combined. Oh, are okay. both working on this issue. Okay. So it's the Oregon Washington uh, Physicians for Social okay. Responsibility. And I'll, I'll I'll get his contact information. I'll put it on the screen. Oh, please do. We, that that would be great. And and also, you know, you should have him on the program. Uh, yes. You know, Chuck and I are working together on this uh, SB 990, and Chuck is uh, very artful um, uh, in his effort to try and get the legislature to shut this one down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so, so um, are there new plants being planned in the United States, or? Well, What's going on? Uh, there are new pl First of all, to answer your question, yes, yes, there are plants being constructed as we speak. In Georgia, I believe, either North or South Carolina, there's, there, there are two uh, reactor complexes that are being constructed. They're very much affected by the, what the Toshiba Westinghouse bankruptcy. Um, there are cost overruns, unfortunately, in those states. The legislature has not protected the people so that they have been able, like here we have what's called construction work in progress, which is banned. Um, in those states, they're allowed to charge for these plants even before they're not producing any oh. energy at all. So it's, it's the typical story. Um, that's, that's part of what's going on. The other part is the D U.S. Department of Energy has, um, through uh, this was actually done in the Obama administration, is uh, putting about $475 million towards the small modular reactor designs, which is um, um, of concern because, and first, it's kind of ironic. Uh, not only <clears throat> are there n not very many designs because Westinghouse, for instance, abandoned their effort. General Electric has done the same. So what we're now left with, basically, ironically enough, is new scale floor 
in in uh, Corvallis, Oregon, and actually they now have a corporate headquarters. I think you know they spun off of the university, and they've got corporate headquarters here in Portland, and they're mm -hmm. out to. Um, they've submitted a reactor design to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Nothing has, has been approved, and that's kind of where we're at as far as new nuclear reactors in this country. Yeah. So, so, so describe these little reactors. The the new scale design is um, um, it's kind of an interesting design. It's basically a big swimming pool. In, in it, and it's underground, it's put in the ground. And what they're proposing, what they wanna do is they wanna build a, 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 a manufacturing plant somewhere that, that is uh, kinda like the Henry Ford you know, thing where you're, it's assembly line, and you're putting together these 50 megawatt modules. Hmm. They're all, you know, everything is contained in the module, and then the 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 plant at the plant site they're constructing these pools and these modules go in the pools and the design is for up to 12 of these modules so that's basically uh, if you max the pool that's about 600 megawatts now comparing that to a um, a conventional reactor, Trojan was a, a thousand megawatt reactor, so this is less than that, yeah. but it's still significantly large. Small is kind of a, kind a of misnomer, misnomer for yeah. this, mm -hmm. really. Um, so they're hot to trot. They want to get their design approved. Um, they want to put a prototype reactor up in um, Idaho at, at, at in, I think, close to Twin Falls where they've got, you know, another federal uh, um, uh, nuclear operation. And um, that would be a prototype facility to operate, but they, they really want to grease the wheels. And two years ago, um, they sponsored a bill in the legislature that was going to create this grand task force that was going to take a look at modular reactors and then do away with the ballot measure that we passed in 1980 that bans new nuclear plants from being built in Oregon until there's a federally licensed repository for the waste. And if there is one, then it is put to a vote of all the people, a statewide vote in this state and, and it, it's I, I remember that uh, um, vividly uh, because I went down to testify and they brought in some of their students from their nuclear program and they were making a case that these poor students were going to be graduating and they had no place to go so I mean it was it was <laughs> it just, it just, there's yes. no no end let's, that they uh, won't go. Yeah, uh, yeah. let's <laughs> let, let's kind of try to destroy the world so, so they have jobs. So they have right, jobs, yeah. right? <laughs> you know? And and you know the the terrible irony of it is, and you know we're getting to what's going on now. The yeah. terrible irony of it is is that there's plenty for these students to be doing. They could be cleaning up the waste that we've already produced. Mm -hmm. And, you know, doing something about that before coming in with these clever ideas to, you know, um, circumvent the protections that the people of this state struggle greatly to put into place. I mean, we talked about Chuck Johnson earlier. Uh, he and Peter Brigell down in Salem you know, they were the chief sponsors of this measure. They they worked their butts off to try and make this happen. And I know, because I've been out there gathering signatures and gathered signatures mm -hmm. on it. So, you know, I'm hoping that we're not going to allow this circumvention to take place. Okay. Yeah, so I, I would just like you to repeat that, what we did in Oregon. And I think it was unique in right. Oregon. Right, right. What we did is in 1980, uh, we got a... Uh, a ballot measure on the ballot. Uh, it was a st it, it, the unfortunate thing about it, and there's always a, th these regrets, is it was a statutory, uh, it was a proposed statutory law. It was not a constitutional amendment. And the reason why I draw that distinction is because with a constitutional amendment, the legislature can't mess with it. They have to refer out any changes to the Constitution to the people because the Constitution belongs to us. Right. Mm -hmm. But with a statutory law, which is a ballot measure that requires less signatures, there's more signatures required if you do a constitutional amendment. With a statutory law, 
Um, it's easier to get on the ballot, but you always have to watch the legislature to see what they're going to yeah. do. Uh -huh. And so um, in, in uh, 1980, we got enough signatures to put this on the ballot. It, it, it passed overwhelmingly by the citizens of Oregon. And we enacted a law that says um, before you can construct, uh, license and construct a nuclear plant in the state of Oregon, there has to be a federally licensed repository for the nuclear waste that's going to be produced mm -hmm. um, at the nuclear plant. And to just cut a brief shortcut back to these small modular reactors, they all produce nuclear waste. There's nothing new in the design as far as just doing smaller. away with that problem. Uh -huh. It's just the waste is localized in each of the little modules. You know, it still adds up to the same, you know, backlog of material that needs to be safely disposed of. So anyway, so that was the first part of what we passed. The second part, you know, first you have to have that federally licensed repository capable of accepting the waste before you can license and construct. The second part was, is if such a repository was there, then it had the, the proposal to construct and license had to be put to a vote of the people. So there was this really great protection. And this, by the way, ended up, you know, the passage of this measure ended up stopping the Portland General Electric from constructing the Pebble Springs nuclear plants oh. that were proposed to be built in eastern Oregon. Mm -hmm. Trojan had already slipped through. Trojan was, you know, the, the Trojan nuclear plant near St. Helens had already been constructed. It was already operating. It didn't fall under this ballot measure. But this ballot measure clearly kept us from having any more nuclear waste produced in mm -hmm. our state. And, and it's done a really good job. It's done yeah. a wonderful right. job, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. and, and ironically enough, you know, at the time, I can remember this, at the time, you know, um, I one of the concerns I had about that ballot measure was is, well, you know, they've got Yucca Mountain. They're, they're going to have a repository oh. here <laughs> before too long. It'll all be going yeah, there. Right. And, and lo and behold, there's no Yucca Mountain. There's no. no, all this time, all the years that have gone by, and you know, what is it now? Uh, almost 47 years have gone by, and we still don't have a federally licensed repository to take mm. the nation's waste, and yeah. yet we're and still producing it. And Trojan's waste, yeah. Tro Trojan's waste still sits uh, out on the plant site next to the Columbia River, up, up, uh, elevated up hmm. on, you know, a concrete pad. It's got 34 dry casts full of waste and no place to go and waiting wow. for the garbage man. Yeah, yeah and, and, and with all this time, there's still no prospect of having a dis disposal site. No, there, there is no. not. And, and you know, um, one of the things, you know, I uh, was hoping we, at some point we talk about, you know, there's been a, a, a I, I, I caught a recent article that was, uh, published in something called China Dialogues, uh, interesting enough, that uh, is an overview of where the world, uh, you know, the, na the all the planetary communities are with their nuclear waste. And mm -hmm. the only country that has a repository that's complete now is Finland. And they're not even going to start loading that until 2020. And it'll take 100 years to fill it. Wow. With all the waste that they've got, uh -huh. I mean, it's just—it's amazing, and it's no I'm one. Sorry, so a uh, hundred years because it's such a slow process to it, move it. it it's, or, yeah, it's it's, it's yeah, right. It's putting it in, to, right? You okay. know, it's putting it in. They still also have some operating reactors, so mm -hmm. you know. But but you know, it. This is a long-term problem, right? And you know, it's like, uh, you know, there's this cartoon that I love, which, uh, you know. Um, um, I attached to this article, which is you know the 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 containment structure, the the, the uh, you know the the nuclear waste containment vessel. I I really oh, yes. love this. Right. Is is the Earth? I mean, basically yes. that's what we've got. We got all this stuff laying around. It's in other people's communities, and mm -hmm. you know nobody knows where it's going. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's a situation we've been at, and but there is this current threat to this law that we passed. This uh, is a painful subject for yeah, me. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you why. Um, 
You know, I I do my best as as I get old and you know try and deal with uh, the problems of life and at the same time carry on my concern about the planet. Um, you know, the legislature is a wily place, and you know I was following legislation that was dropped in the in the Oregon legislature, and I did not see this bill. Chuck Johnson didn't see this bill. Senate Bill 990. We're talking about Senate Bill 990. It got sponsored apparently on March the 2nd. And it, instead of going to the regular committees that, that we follow, I'd been down to testify on some legislation regarding um, global warming and climate change. It, and most of that goes to the, the Energy and Environment Committees on the Senate and the, the House side. This bill um, went to the Business and Transportation Committee on the Senate side, so I didn't see it, and Chuck didn't see it. And so um, that committee, uh, Brian Boquist, Senator Brian Boquist, um, he sponsored this bill. And he's been carrying water for new scale fluor for some time now. And he's from that area. He's from actually the from the Dalles. He's from the Dalles. Oh, yeah. Okay. And and hmm. but it's that down in that it's close to, to where um, you know, Oregon State University is and their mm -hmm. operation is. And so so uh, he uh, sponsored this bill. It sailed through the committee. I mean, there were basically four people that testified. It went to the floor of the Senate, and it passed the Senate, and I never wow. saw it. I mean, I, I really, I'm not kidding you, it hurts to be able to confess to this. So anyway, um, I got a call from Chuck about um, a, a, a week ago in which he told me, he had, he had learned from it because apparently I guess there's a lobbyist down in the legislature that represents the Union of Concerned Scientists. And they saw it and said, hey, this doesn't smell right. Yeah. And so Chuck called me and I, you know, I was just devastated by it. I thought that the bills, you know, that this was the end of bills being sponsored in the legislature. I had no idea that this was creeping through. Um, and so I immediately, you know, dropped everything I was doing and got on the computer, sent out a legislative alert, um, started getting, uh, you know, got a copy of the bill. Um, in fact, one of the things, if people are interested in taking a look at this legislation, there is, there is a, uh, all you got to do is go on your computer, go to Google and put in Oregon State Legislature. SB 990. Just Google it, and that'll immediately take you. This I must say, I'm impressed with the state of Oregon's website, the yeah. legislative mm -hmm. website, because you can get lots of information that takes you right to the web page on SB 990. It gives you the history of what happened. It gives you a copy of the bill if you want to print it. It tells you where what the current status is, and right now the current status is is that it, the bill has uh, been sent over from the Senate to the uh, House of Representatives, the State House of Representatives, and it is scheduled for, uh, uh, it, 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 at some point, um, there will be a hearing scheduled, but it hasn't been scheduled yet. And I checked, <laughs> believe me, before I got in my car to come here, <laughs> yeah. I, went, uh, I went and took a look at it to make sure that I could give you the most up-to-date information. Okay. So, so uh, what does the bill do? The bill is clever. What, what the bill does is, first of all, it, it um, would allow for small modular reactors up to 300 megawatts. Now, it's interesting to see what they did here. Um, instead of allowing the full um, uh, small modular reactor pool to be filled with all 12 of the modules, it only allows half of the pool to be filled. So. Mm -hmm up to 300 megawatts, those reactors can be uh, sited within a, an incorporated city that has passed an ordinance allowing it to happen, or in an unincorporated area in a county that has passed an ordinance to allow it to happen. And as a, as a kind of a, a, a clever way of doing away with concern and making it look like it's the same thing those ordinances 
have to be submitted to the people within the boundaries of the city, keep in mind, within the boundaries of the city or within the boundaries of the county for a vote, okay. whether they want to allow this to happen. It's not the same kind of protection that we have with the statewide mandate that you have to have a federally licensed repository for the waste and you have to have a statewide vote of the people. So mm -hmm. it kind of tries to localize it. Uh, yeah. I'm assuming that Brian Boquist is looking at Corvallis and thinking, wow, we'll put one there. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But, but the, so the, we, if, if, it's an if end this run. passed, would that void the measure that we passed in 1980? It would void the measure for any modular reactors under th under 300 megawatts in size. Okay. So there it is. Mm -hmm. So it's an end run. It's an end run around this protection that we work so hard on. And that's why, you, as you might imagine, it's so painful. I mean, for me personally, it mm -hmm. is painful to see this because I know the struggle that we have gone through, having gone through it in part, and along with a lot of other people who went out and got signatures, what it took to make this happen. And now all of a sudden, this cute maneuver is in the works and it's actually gone through the Senate. And that, that's the other thing that is so of great concern to me. I mean, we have a legislature, a, a unique legislature, because both the House and the Senate is controlled by Democrats. Mm -hmm. How the hell could the senators on the Democratic side pass this bill? And they, and they passed it 25 to 3. Wow. Three only three senators voted against it. One was absent. There was a four a fourth senator oh, who, that was absent. Who were the three that voted against? The uh, the three people that voted against it were Dim Senator Dimbro, Excellent. Senator Frederick, who's by the way our senator here, I think in the in the Northeast, mm -hmm. and uh, Senator Manning. Okay, do, do you know where he's from? Manning Jr. I do not. I did yeah, not I look this up, but that you can find all that yeah. on the. It, it is remarkable the yeah. amount of information that you can get on the uh, yeah, at yeah. the legislators. Yeah. But uh, Dembro and Fredericks are both from Portland, so right, and b actually right. Both so it's Portland, basically, right. it's basically the Portland people protecting. You know, apparently have a memory uh -huh. about what we went through in the in the old. But there are other people in the Senate that should have known mm -hmm. about this, should have seen what was going on here, and yeah. they did not. Okay. So yeah. So this is, you know, the, the other thing which surprises me is that, is that the Senate has actually voted and approved this already because they haven't, they haven't done that with very many bills yet. No, no, it's, yeah. it's, it's, the, it's greased. Yeah. It's going down there. And that's why now this bill has, now we were in a, in a committee that, you know, would have been the normal location for this. We're in the House Energy and Environment Committee. They have not scheduled a hearing yet, but a hearing will be coming. And, you know, keep in mind, um, it, you should get a hold of your representative, your own personal representative, and let them know that you are opposed to SB 990 if you want to preserve what we did in 1980. This is terribly important to do. Um, you, you can get a hold of the, the individual members. There's, there's five Democrats on this committee. Um, Ken Helm, Representative Ken Helm, he's uh, uh, District 34 in Washington County. Uh, Representative Phil Barnett, he's a Democrat, District 11, Central uh, Lane and Lynn County. Representative Paul Holvey, he's a Democrat, uh, District 8 in Eugene. Representative Pam Marsh, she's a Democrat, District 5 in Ashland. Um, we need all five of those Democrats to put this one to bed. Now the chair, that it's also important to get a hold of the chair because the chair could decide not to hold a hearing and that mm -hmm. would just end this, it would be gone. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm worried about the grease. You know, the, the sausage making in the legislature is not a wonderful thing to watch and um, I think that um, each of us who are concerned about this need to do everything we can to get a hold of our representatives and let them know what's mm -hmm. going on here. Yeah. I would assume that if, uh, you know, if this is moving at the state level, then there's probably lobbying going on in various counties and cities to produce those ordinances 
or those ballot measures. Uh, that, to that would come. I would. I would assume that what they first probably working on first. It. What they want to do is get this bill through. Uh -huh. Then that opens the door to start approaching local communities to see if you can get an ordinance passed yeah. to get one of these things cited within a locality. Mm -hmm. So you know, it, Oregon could um, by the passage of this measure become you know, the, the guinea pig for small modular reactors. Ironically enough, a state that had, you know, early on, as I repeatedly said, you know, wanted to take itself out of being experimented on. Yeah. Uh -huh. So. Uh, yeah. So, okay, so so the best thing that people can do is just call call either the members of the committee call or the members call of your the, own representative. Call, call your own representative. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and the other thing, too, is is get the word out to your friends that live across the state because, you know, if this gets to the floor of the House, now we've got the problem of trying to get to all the representatives to... to uh, uh, stop this and you know the, it, we basically have a kind of a, f a, a four point pronged opportunity here if we can get the chair to kill the bill then the bill's gone mm -hmm. if the chair won't kill the bill and it goes to hearing then we get the committee to kill the bill hopefully the bill's gone if the, if the committee won't kill the bill then it goes to the house floor if they pass it out it goes to the house floor and now we got to get all you know a majority of the representatives in the house to mm -hmm. to put a stop to this if they won't put a stop to it our last hope is governor brown okay so right. we've got four basically four rounds or opportunities here so it's important to spread awareness and that's the good news what less than a minute okay the good news is is that and people get a hold of me I don't know if my yeah it's been on yeah the, if my ad, an, ad email address and phone number there um, call me because I can send you uh, Chuck Johnson's uh, um, the PSR flyer that's put out the Sierra Club okay. has put out a wonderful thing on small modular reactors and of course there's the article on waste in the country and thank you yeah. so much for providing yet again a platform to yeah. do, to get some justice very good thank you very much Lloyd Marbet. So we've been talking with lo longtime anti-nuclear pro-democracy activist and former candidate for Oregon Secretary of State Lloyd Mybet. Uh, you can reach Lloyd and get involved in the current efforts to oppose small nuclear module reactors at Lloyd at Marbet.org. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a progressive populist tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> I like that.